Can I love it? All right. Thank you guys so much for um, welcoming me back. All right, that'll do it for us here. Uh, I'm Lindsay Tuckman. Let's head over to Veronica now. Veronica, I know you know a thing or two about uh, dealing with babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a thing or two. And it feels like it was just yesterday that Hartley was that size. Now he's 10. <laughs> it goes so by in a blank. <laughs> it really does. All right, Lindsay, thank you so much. We're now 16 days away from a potentially catastrophic default. Can Washington get a deal done this week? I'm a congenital optimist. But I really think there's a desire on their part as well as ours to reach agreement. I think we'll be able to do it. Uh, we just watched the CEO come out saying we're $100 billion further in debt. And so, uh, do you? Seems more like they want to default than a deal. Two very different tones from the nation's top leaders ahead of tomorrow's White House meeting on the debt ceiling. An anticipated surge of migrants after Title 42's expiration isn't happening. We have the new numbers that show what's really going on at the southern border. The United Kingdom promising Ukraine more tools and more training as it prepares for its spring counteroffensive. And delivering babies is a labor of love for this pair of very special nurses. And I have watched her come out of her shell and just just thrive. Why they're bound by much more than just their job. Scripps News Live begins right now. We're two weeks away now from what could be a catastrophic economic default. So are lawmakers any closer at this point to a deal on raising the debt ceiling? Well, it depends on who you ask. Hello to you, I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Happy Monday. Hope you had a terrific Mother's Day weekend. Welcome to Scripps News Live. Speaking of the reporters outside of his home in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware on Sunday, President Biden struck this optimistic tone saying that he believes there will be a deal because Republicans want to reach an agreement. But this morning, Speaker McCarthy had a very different take, claiming Democrats aren't serious about negotiations, suggesting they want a default more than they want a deal. National political correspondent Kevin's really live for us at the Capitol right now. So, Kevin, I know it feels as though you've probably been reporting on this for months, and that's because you have. <laughs> so where do you think stand on this <laughs> stalemate? I know. I mean, it just keeps going on and on and on. But truth be told, we're getting even closer to that June 1st X date. What happened over the weekend? Bring us to yeah. speed. Veronica, what's that old adage that the traders say up on the street that time is money? Well, in this case, it's about $31.4 trillion worth as we inch closer to what Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said the X date will be on June 1st. Now, over the weekend and into this morning, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and President Biden agreeing to continue their talks on the debt ceiling sometime tomorrow and throughout the week. This after multiple days of staff level meetings trying to hammer out some type of a framework agreement around the debt ceiling. Uh, Democrats seem poised to agree to some concessions as it relates to cutting government spending, particularly around getting back some of the unspent COVID-19 money that had gone out to the states, to local governments, local municipalities that had gone on uh, unspent rather during the pandemic. If that happens, key word, if that happens, it could potentially make it more difficult for some of those construction projects around the country to get access to capital, the funding for those small businesses, medium-sized businesses who are uh, lumped into the supply chain of that financing around the country, uh, and, and not just in, in the coast, but around the country. Uh, it could make it more difficult, again, to get that access to capital. So you're seeing an uptick in those conversations relating to financing to some of those small small and medium-sized business projects throughout the country. But I want to play for you what President Biden had to say uh, just after a bike ride uh, in Rehoboth Beach. Take a listen to President Biden. I remain optimistic because I'm a congenital optimist. But I really think there's a desire on their part as well as ours to reach agreement. I think we'll be able to do it. Now, we, we've really been focusing in on this X date, when the United States will reach, hit its head against this debt ceiling. But the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office on Friday issued a report that appears to suggest that the U.S. might have some additional days or even weeks from reaching what Secretary Yellen has put forth as the X date. I want to quote directly from here, which is if the from the report, which they say, quote, if the Treasury's cash and extraordinary measures 
are sufficient to finance the government until June 15th. Expected quarterly tax receipts and additional extraordinary measures will probably allow the government to continue financing operations through at least the end of July. And, and you know, Veronica, I know you want to ask me about the markets, and I'm happy to talk about that, but you look at what happens uh, with regards to how much time in Washington Republicans and Democrats are going to need. They're going to need all the time they can get. So that wiggle room around the X state and the market reaction around that X state could again appear after a few days after, a few weeks after June 1st, that Secretary Yellen had originally said. Yeah, I'm taking a peek at the markets right now, and they look a little changed as investors wait to, to hear what's going to happen next. You know, there was yeah. a Democrat on the a Hill, uh, a House representative, Abigail Spam Spamberger. I don't know if you're familiar with her and what she's been pitching, yeah. but she's been saying yes. that hey. Congress shouldn't get paid until this whole debt ceiling issue is dealt with. Well, for, for Congresswoman Spanberger, a centrist Democrat from Virginia in the southern portion of the state, Veronica, what she's essentially is seeing coming is in the fiscal fights of yesteryear, which is that uh, if, 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 if there is a technical default, if the U.S. defaults on its debt, again, it'd be the first time in history, if that happens, then President Biden, the executive branch, they're going to have to make some difficult decisions about prioritizing payments, about who exactly gets paid which debt obligations get met uh, in, in, in that immediate time. So for Congresswoman Spanberger to get out front of that, she's saying, well, lawmakers, policymakers should, should not get paid uh, as a result of not being able to get to some type of a consensus agreement. Uh, you know, I think you're going to hear a lot of folks follow her lead uh, in terms of the messaging that she's putting out there. But again, if there is a technical default, it's going to mean the folks aren't going to get paid on time. And that, of course, will only ratchet up these conversations. You mentioned the markets. Uh, we should note that a lot of investors are holding their breath to try to see when that breakthrough is going to come. They're assuming a breakthrough will come. But again, no clear sign of a framework agreement. But that's really what I'll be looking for tomorrow uh, in that meeting when they meet. All right. We'll be checking back with you then. Kevin's really live on Capitol Hill. Kevin, always appreciate it. Thanks yeah. so much. So as Kevin was just reporting there, Republicans on Capitol Hill insist that there will be no deal without addressing the national deficit. So let's take a look at this. How dire has the deficit become? Here's what stands right now according to the Treasury. The U.S. debt stands at $31,459,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000
would result in less tax revenue over time, wiping out any savings. And finally, on page 95, something known as a community engagement requirement. It would mean more able-bodied adults under 56 years of age would have to work or volunteer each month to stay on Medicaid. New restrictions would also be placed on how long someone could receive SNAP benefits. That's money for low-income people to buy food. Estimated savings, $120 billion. To be clear, these proposals from conservatives are being met with resistance inside the White House. Barat Romamurdi is on President Biden's National Economic Council. We have two very different visions, uh, us and the Republicans, uh, on this point. But still, conservatives say the White House must be willing to cut something. Should people start panicking about a potential default? No. Iowa Republican Senator Chuck Grassley says it's only fair for them to try and use this moment to get something. It's all part of a big compromise to get this spending down. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. And we have much more to come for you in this hour of Scripps News Live. North Carolina's governor asking Republicans for helping to preserve abortion rights in his state. Why he needs just one lawmaker to make a key veto stand. Also being released from prison doesn't always mean true freedom. Why millions of Americans with criminal convictions are struggling right now to find work. And an anticipated surge of migrants after Title 42's ex expiration never materialized. What the numbers really tell us about the situation at the southern border. That's next. This is an important message for anyone and everyone on or eligible for Medicare. If Medicare is important to you, then you need to hear this message because Medicare benefits matter to millions of Americans. Did you know Medicare has different parts, including Medicare Part A and Part B, often called Original Medicare? And then there's Medicare Part C, representing Medicare Advantage plans, and Part D for prescription drug coverage. Call 800-912-2786 now for your free Medicare coverage checkup. We can look up your plan and see if you're missing out on a plan with extra benefits or if your income qualifies you to reduce costs on your prescription medications. Did you know there are different enrollment periods like the Medicare annual enrollment period when beneficiaries can enroll in or change coverage? But there are also certain conditions or qualifications that may allow you to qualify for a special enrollment period any time of the year. So call the number on your screen now for your free Medicare coverage checkup. This is a free service that you can call at absolutely no cost to you. I'm on Medicare. I called to see if my income qualified for lower prescription medication costs. The friendly agent was very knowledgeable and I found out I qualified for a special enrollment period. So I'm so glad I called. We can look up your plan and see if you are missing out on a plan with extra benefits. We can also check to see if your income qualifies you to reduce the cost of your prescription medications. And we can even tell you if you qualify for a special enrollment period. It's your free Medicare coverage checkup at absolutely no cost to you. Just call 800-912-2786. And you can speak with a licensed agent who can check up on your plan and answer your questions. The Medicare Benefits and Questions line is open and anyone on or eligible for Medicare can call. The call and Medicare coverage checkup is free with no obligation. Call now. We love talking to people with Medicare, and the call is free. Just call 800-912-2786. 800-912-2786. Wouldn't it be great if every meal was perfect? Not just big family cookouts or cozy dinners for two, but even those crazy busy everyday meals? With Omaha Steaks, you'll love every meal because we only deliver the best. The possibilities are endless, and perfection is always guaranteed. Visit omahasteaks.com slash TV to order the perfect meal collection today for just $99.99 and get eight burgers free. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. Thanks so much for being with us. Context and conversation. There's a new study that might make you feel a little bit better. Okay. okay. Mm. Listen to this. Are the stories that will shape each day. Here with us now is meteorologist Scott Withers. You got just wave after wave after wave. So you can get on with yours. Make sure you stay with us as we monitor this developing story. Morning Rush. Weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central. Only on Scripps News. warnings that there would be a surge of migrants seeking access to the U.S. upon Title 42's expiration. The Department of Homeland Security is saying there's been no substantial increase in immigration. 
In the meantime, the Biden administration is taking action to streamline the migration process. It plans to ask an appeals court today to release migrants without them having to make a first court appearance. It takes 90 minutes to two hours to process each person. Now instead, released migrants would have to report to an immigration office within 60 days. In the meantime, things at the southern border haven't been as chaotic as some were anticipating. In fact, Border Patrol agents say there's been a huge drop in the number of people crossing the border. National correspondent Morris Sergani has the details. We have been closely tracking how all of this plays out today. Of course, marks day four since Title 42 expired. While it is still early, we want to give you a look now at the estimated number of daily migrant encounters. This is according to DHS down at the U.S.-Mexico border so far. Now, over the weekend, Homeland Security uh, Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said there were 6,300 migrant encounters at the border Friday and 4,200 on a Saturday. Those numbers are about half of what DHS reported last week leading up to the expiration of Title 42. When officials reported 11,000 migrant crossings on both Tuesday and Wednesday. Again, that was of last week. So Title 42 has been replaced with the decades-old existing immigration policy, Title 8, which makes it easier for authorities to deport migrants back to their home countries unless they express credible fear of returning and pass an interview. Mallorca says there are now stronger penalties in place for those people who um, enter our country illegally. Listen. There is a lawful safe and orderly way to arrive in the United States that is through the pathways that President Biden has expanded in an unprecedented way. And then there's a consequence if one does not use those lawful pathways. And that consequence is removal from the United States, a deportation, and encountering a five-year ban on reentry and possible criminal prosecution. So again, they credit those stiffer penalties uh, for less crossings. Now, over the weekend, President Biden said he believes the situation is going, quote, much better than expected, despite saying last week to likely expect some chaos for weeks to come. Now, this is Border Patrol over the weekend said its focus has to remain on securing communities down there at the border and also tending to the needs of those migrants who may be in distress. Back to you. All right, Mara, thank you so much for that. So President Biden says he has no plans to visit the southern border. He was telling reporters yesterday that he thought his presence would be, quote, disruptive. Providing assistance in the meantime for migrants goes beyond U.S. and state governments. There are others that are trying to help people seek asylum. Natalie Chuck from Scripps News San Diego shows us a grassroots effort that is taking place right now, helping migrants in one part of California. As the hot sun beats down in this East County desert, Colombia, Colombia. migrants from all over the world waiting on American soil, doing whatever they can to stay covered. She said that they're doing good, but if she would have known the situation, she would have risked her kids or herself. This mother of two traveling from Colombia to the United States alongside her husband. She says they paid $400 for guidance to the border after taking two flights to get to Tijuana. She was told that as soon as she crossed into America, things would be better. But she wasn't expecting to be here for five days with little food or water. Yo he llorado de saber que sacrifiqué a mis hijas a estos. She has cried to know, uh, from sacrificing her kids to this situation. A few miles down the road, it's all hands on deck at this abandoned gas station. Donations pouring in for migrants. This entire process, all thanks to community members, not government aid. And all of those donations at that gas station in Hakumba packed up and brought here multiple times a day to the border where hundreds are lining up waiting to pick up those donations. Over here they've got water bottles, they're picking up blankets. And then over here we've got clothing donations, even more being spread out as we speak. All of these people, these volunteers just don't Dozens of them servicing hundreds of people. This is like nothing like we've ever seen. Jeffrey Osborne lives in the area and is spearheading this effort after initially seeing hundreds of migrants at the border on Thursday. People sprawled out through the desert with kind of makeshift shelters out of sticks and other things with no services whatsoever. When asked how helpful these resources have been. Oh, nos han salvado la vida. Ayer antes, antes de que llegaran no habíamos comido nada, ni una gota de agua. Yesterday when we got here and dropped off their food, they had, had no meals at all. And with only a fraction of these migrants taken by Border Patrol each day, volunteers expect to be out here for a while. If people support us, we can keep 
doing what we're doing. And we are giving every single person there, especially the families with women and kids, everything they need every single day. Natalie Chuck, for Scripps News. And straight ahead on Scripps News Live, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis taking the stage in Iowa just hours after President Trump blamed weather for canceling that event in that state. Also, the U.K. agreeing to provide Ukraine with long-range attack drones after President Zelensky meets one-on-one -on -one with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. We'll have that for you next. Why is Aaron happy? Well, Carvana has tens of thousands of cars under $20,000. So Aaron's folks could help hook him up with a new ride. We'll drive you happy at Carvana. Hi, I'm Kirk Kaiser, and did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-394-2715. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. Call 800-394-2715. That's 800-394-2715. How can a photo become a vibrant part of your home? When you go to TriFracture.com and print your images directly on glass. Get beautiful depth and clarity on a sleek, frameless print that's easy to hang and looks incredible in any space. Go to TriFracture.com now to save 20% on glass prints. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers. The most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has agreed to send long-range attack drones to Ukraine, and that is in addition to cruise missiles that were announced last week. Now, Sunak met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in London today, and he said the UK will train Ukrainian fighter pilots to use Western jets relatively soon. In the meantime, President Zelensky said a delayed Ukrainian counteroffensive against Russian troops will begin soon as well. We really need some, some more time. Not too much. We'll be ready, you know, in some time. I, I, I want to be very honest with you. I, I can't share with you some days. I, I just don't want to prepare. Not, not for our friends. There are no secrets from our friends, but there are some secrets from, from our neighbors. President Zelensky has visited several European countries shoring up support for the fight against Russia. Correspondent Ali Barrett is live in London for us with more on the meeting taking place between Prime Minister Sunak and the Ukrainian president. All right, Ali, bring us up to speed here. We know that a lot of the announcements that have been made so far are pretty significant. What exactly has come out of this meeting between the two leaders? 
Yeah, well, there was a broad pledge from the UK that it's going to continue supporting Ukraine over the long term, not just in the short and the medium term, and also a pledge from UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak that the UK is going to continue to work to try and persuade other uh, Ukrainian allies around the world that they should do the same, that this is uh, a level of support from international allies that is going to continue uh, until Russia is defeated. That certainly is what the UK says has to be the ambition here. And then come Coming out of these meetings at Chequers, the UK Prime Minister's country residence, that pledge, um, uh, those details about the further round of support in military terms that the UK is sending to Ukraine. So that is going to be hundreds, we are told, of armed drones, but also those long range air defence missiles, which the Ukrainians say could be so uh, crucial to uh, trying to tip the balance in the conflict inside Ukraine. What there wasn't was a pledge from the UK for those fighter jets that President Zelensky Zelensky is so keen to get hold of, but the UK says uh, there is progress towards that aim. One thing we will be doing, starting actually relatively soon, is uh, training of Ukrainian pilots, and that's something that we've discussed today. We're ready to implement those plans uh, in, in relatively short order, which will mean that we're training Ukrainian uh, citizens to become absolutely combat-ready aircraft pilots, uh, and particularly whether it comes to NATO tactics as well, because that's an important part of the long-term relationship between our countries. And while President Zelensky hasn't yet achieved uh, that pledge of those F-16 fighter jets that he so wants to protect Ukrainian skies, he did describe uh, believing that there should be an announcement in what he called the closest time. He said there should be some very important decisions on that front. Yeah, we know that this is urgent because Ukraine has been gearing up for this new counteroffensive against Russia for some time now, Ali. Uh, bring us up to speed as to what is happening on the front lines right now. Yeah, that's right. There's a, a lot of expectation about this uh, counteroffensive from the Ukrainians. It's been much talked about for some time. We know that it's coming at some point. We just don't know exactly when. There has been some speculation that perhaps the Ukrainians have been having to delay their counteroffensive because they haven't quite secured the amount uh, and the scale of weaponry and arms and ammunition from allies uh, yet that they need for that counteroffensive. But we did hear President Zelensky asked about it at checkers after his talks with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and he didn't want to give any detail away to the uh, gathered media and the journalists there but it was a, a pretty clear signal that he had been discussing the counteroffensive and the timing of it with Prime Minister uh, Rishi Sunak. There have been some recent gains uh, in various uh, areas on Ukrainian soil around Bakhmut for example but the main counteroffensive has not yet begun so as I say all eyes are on exactly when that might take place and President Zelensky signaling today that he thinks it will be soon, just not telling us exactly when yet. All right, Ollie Barrett reporting live from London with the very latest there in Ukraine. Ollie, thank you so much. All right, the time is now 27 minutes after the hour. Let's get you to speed right now. The biggest stories that we're tracking for you. Later today, members of the Texas House have a final vote scheduled on a bill that bans gender affirming care for minors. The legislation prohibits people under the age of 18 from puberty blockers, hormone therapy, and transition related surgeries. Any minor already receiving this type of care would be weaned off their medication. Now, if the bill passes, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is expected to sign it. In North Carolina, lawmakers there who want to ban abortion after 12 weeks will have to override a veto by Democratic Governor Roy Cooper. He signed it at an abortion rights rally on Saturday. North Carolina Republicans claim to have the votes to override it. Governor Cooper said that if just one Republican breaks ranks, the veto will hold. The governor called out four lawmakers who previously said they supported abortion rights and then voted for the new restrictions. Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley refusing to support a federal abortion ban. The former South Carolina governor said on CBS's Face the Nation that it's just not realistic on the federal level. Haley signed a 20-week abortion ban when she was South Carolina's governor. Republican presidential candidate Tim Scott of South Carolina has called for a 20-week federal abortion ban.
So this weekend, all eyes were on the man widely expected to challenge Haley and others for the Republican presidential nomination. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis rallying voters at the Feenstra family picnic in Sioux Center on Saturday before making a surprise stop in Des Moines. DeSantis' unannounced appearance in the state capitol was sparking conversation because it came just hours after former President Trump canceled an event there, citing concern about dangerous weather. Florida State Capitol reporter Forrest Saunders attended the event and has more now on what appears to be the buildup to the official unveiling of DeSantis 2024. From Sioux Center. Thank you. To Cedar Rapids. Ron DeSantis. Florida's governor barnstormed Iowa on Saturday, delivering stump speeches and not very subtle swings at former President Donald Trump, urging Iowans to pick a winner in 2024. There's no substitute for victory. We must reject the culture of losing that has infected our party in recent years. The time for excuses is over. The governor even capitalized on severe weather canceled Trump's Des Moines rally. So DeSantis made a surprise stop near the venue, only further raising suspicion that a big announcement is imminent. What do you want to hear from him today? Um, that he's going to run. I would love to hear that. Plenty we spoke with were ready for something new, as some Iowans have soured on Trump's divisive rhetoric. And I think DeSantis has got the ability to kind of really bring our country together a little bit. And Trump's defeats. Well... He couldn't handle losing my January 6th deal. That's the biggest thing. DeSantis also has a growing number of Iowa officials behind him, at least 37 state GOP lawmakers giving endorsements this weekend, like the Senate president and House majority leader. Look at what he's done in Florida. Look at what he's done to help bolster other states and lead by example. That's the kind of leader that we need. It's a tough call for others. I know some people are Trumpers, you know, they're not going to vote for anybody but Trump, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to wait and see. Meanwhile, Iowa's politicians elected statewide say they're not taking sides. Any thoughts about 24 with regards to Governor DeSantis? Well, we're going to continue to welcome him. Of course, uh, Governor Kim Reynolds and Chuck Grassley and I will remain neutral through the caucuses. America's comeback starts right yes! now. Trump definitely has his supporters, too. You know, Trump just has something about him that he draws people. And even with that scrubbed rally, the former president still sought to plant a flag. Trump fired off a press release showing support of more than 150 Iowa elected and grassroots leaders Saturday night. Then Sunday took to Truth Social to tout his lead in early polling. He dubbed the governor Rob and questioned if he's, quote, just young, inexperienced, and naive, or more troubling, is he a fool who has no idea what he's doing? All right. That jab aside, exactly what DeSantis is doing sure looks like running for president and making a bid for Iowa ahead of the vital caucuses. For Saunders, Scripps News, Tallahassee. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, being released from prison doesn't always mean true freedom. After a quick break, we're going to show you how millions of Americans with criminal convictions are struggling to find work and who is working to help them. But first, one year after a racially motivated massacre at this Buffalo, New York grocery store, President Biden is calling for more action on gun control and community members are coming together to heal. We'll have that for you next when Scripps News Live comes back. Also, I want to remind you right here to follow us online at Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. We'll be right back. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. 
Mom, we're so glad you're feeling better. You gave us such a scare. I know, honey. Me too. But I want you to know I'm at peace with my home going when my time is up. And did I also tell you that I got coverage for my funeral so you and your brother would not have to worry about expenses? I didn't know you were saving money for your final expenses. I haven't. I called Open Care, and with one phone call, I was eligible for $30,000 for my funeral and final expenses. That's wonderful, Mom, but how did you pass your medical exam with your health condition? Oh, that's the best part. No medical exam is needed. That's right, and my rates can never increase, my benefits will not decrease, and my coverage will never be canceled. Mom, I'm so glad you called. Mm -hmm. You can now get up to $30,000 in life insurance coverage to help pay for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you can be enrolled with just one phone call. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call the number on your screen now and see how a final expense life insurance plan can help you. We don't want to leave our loved ones with debt. The cost of a funeral can be $8,000 or more. A final expense life insurance plan Plan will pay up to $30,000, which can be used for funeral and other final expenses. Call 800-790-5695 now for your free information. You can now get up to $30,000 in life insurance coverage to help pay for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you can be enrolled with just one phone call. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call the number on your screen now and see how a final expense life insurance plan can help you. There's no obligation. Call 800-790-5695. That's 800-790-5695. Yeah, dude, that doesn't look good. I know what to do. I'm going to castnetusa.com. I can apply minutes, and if approved, I can have the money as soon as the same business day. Go to castnetusa.com to apply for the money you need. Digging deeper into the headlines. We have some big stories to get to tonight. Shedding light on groundbreaking investigations and ending your night with something new. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Christian Bryant. Scripps News Tonight, live tonight, starting at 8, 7 central. like to hear from you. You can always give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline toll free 1-833-4-SCRIPS. Make sure you share your comments, your story ideas with us at any time. So President Biden penned a passionate op-ed in yesterday's USA Today marking the one year anniversary of the massacre at a Buffalo, New York grocery store. Now in that piece, President Biden talked about the bipartisan gun legislation that he championed after the Topps massacre and the, and the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. And though he called the law, quote, real progress, he says there have been 650 mass shootings in this country since Buffalo and more must be done. The president says, and I'm quoting here, my power is not absolute. Congress must act, including by banning assault weapons and high capacity magazines, requiring gun owners to securely store their firearms, requiring background checks for all gun sales, and repealing gun manufacturers' immunity from liability. We also need more governors and state legislators to take these steps, end quote. Now, on the very same day that that op-ed was published, people in the city of Buffalo honored the loved ones that they lost on May 14th of last year. 13 bell chimes rang out, representing the 10 people killed and three wounded in that racially motivated attack. Buffalo's Mayor Byron Brown, New York Governor Kathy Hochul, and Senator Chuck Schumer all in attendance at yesterday's ceremony in honor of those victims. In the meantime, one year after a gunman walked into this grocery store targeting victims at random because of their color of skin, Buffalo residents remain frustrated and they've taken it upon themselves to beautify the community they love and help heal those wounds. Scripps News National Correspondent Stephanie Sandoval shows us just how they're doing it. One year after an 18-year-old murdered 10 people at a grocery store in a predominantly black neighborhood, Buffalo's east side residents there say nothing has changed, renovated and reopened. But it doesn't erase the damage from the May 14th, 2022 racist attack. It was a tough day. The day still haunts Grady Lewis. Right here. He was standing just across the street when he heard gunfire. 
residents in the neighborhood of Cold Springs say they want to see real change as they try to move forward from this tragedy. Me being 20 seconds, 30 seconds away and knowing I could have been one of those people on the wall, I don't want you ringing no bell for me. I would have wanted you to make sure nobody looks like me have that happen to them again. Make a real change in this country because this melanin is special. Gary Hurd, Paula Connors, John Frederick Daniels and Lewis are trying to be the positive change they want to see in their community by providing a space where people can feel safe again right next door from Tops. It's been a collaborative effort to bring this mural to fruition. I was really in a dark place, uh, going through some rough times, and um, I'm a veteran. I had to find something, and art like found me. So having the opportunity to be able to, you know, show the same thing that saved me, that may be able to save a couple more people or help a couple more people look on the bright side. Organizers say the location will also have benches for people to sit on and lights to see the mural at night. It's one step forward, but Daniel says his community needs a whole lot more, like playgrounds for kids, a dog park, spaces where people can come together. I feel like it's just the community needs more community. But most importantly, he says they need more people in the community to step up. We need people that are part of the community or want to be part of it that's going to help it. Not people, foreign or outsiders, coming in just to take pictures and then leave or just to talk to the people and, 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 and try to pour in some empathy and then leave. No, we need the people that's going to be there. <laughs> people like Connors, who lives in Buffalo but not in the neighborhood, Neighborhood, says she couldn't just sit back and watch. For me not to step up just wouldn't have felt right. Not only a tribute for the 10 lives lost, Connor says she hopes people will see the mural and be inspired by their work and encourage others to step up. I think what is, what could be helpful is if they would look for grassroots opportunities, really coming into the neighborhood just like I did, and asking, what do you need? Ask the people and, and then respond. As Judge Susan Egan, who sentenced a gunman to life in prison without parole, explains, redlining and systematic racism has plagued the community. The ugly truth is that our nation was founded and built in part on white supremacy. For Lewis, the fight isn't over, despite the challenges. Cold Springs will always be home. I'm Buffalo Week over here. I want somebody to be strong for me and do the right thing. Stephanie Sandoval, Scripps News. Today marks the start of a new Scripps new News initiative in which we're going to be taking you beyond the statistics, the spin, to give you the truth about crime. We're going to begin this series by taking a look at what happens to people who serve time for a crime. Contrary to what many people might be believe, being released from prison doesn't always equal freedom because millions of Americans with a criminal conviction on their records struggle to find work. Scripsy's national correspondent Amber Strong shows us what they're up against in the workforce and who is working to help them. You've probably heard the old adage, if you do the crime, you got to do the time. But up to 100 million Americans have criminal records, and many of them say even though the sentence is over, the punishment remains and keeps them from living normal lives, including finding a job. Native Washingtonian Eric Weaver knows the city well, the good and the bad. I was raised by my mother, single family. Uh, she had me when she was 15, you know, so just growing up in that half and, and just seeing people that were doing wrong having. At 17, he began his 22 years in prison for his involvement in a homicide during the city's 1980s drug war. After release, Weaver says despite his best efforts at getting back on track, it was sometimes impossible because he couldn't get a job. We come out here with the intention, sort of goal to do the right thing. We just want to, you know, get a job and, and, and be productive citizens. But it's like so many doors were getting slammed in my face when I first came home. It took a year to find work, a struggle that led him down a different path this time, starting a nonprofit to help people like him. Since his release, some things have changed for returning citizens, and some haven't. Mainly since the pandemic, when a lot of places got close, we compete with a population of people 
that have an extensive resume and jobs and experience, we don't have that. That lack of skills combined with distrust from would-be employers often leave people like Weaver at the bottom of the list of candidates, if they make the list at all. According to a Department of Justice study, 33% of participants released from federal prison did not find employment four years after their release. The numbers only exacerbated by race, with blacks and Hispanics faring the worst, especially in the first few months after release. More than 30 states have implemented ban the box laws, a fair hiring policy preventing potential employers from digging into a candidate's criminal background until later in the hiring process. It's designed to allow candidates' qualifications to shine first. In 2019, President Trump signed a similar bill, dubbed the Fair Chance Act, delaying background checks for some federal jobs. Now, a new movement called Clean Slate Laws automatically expunge records for certain convictions. It's been passed in California, Colorado, Connecticut, and Oklahoma. But a job is just one battle. Barriers to things like employment, uh, housing, education, um, basic things like voting. Sammy Perez is grassroots director with Prison Fellowship, a nonprofit started by convicted felon and former Nixon White House counsel Chuck Colson. As of right now, we know that there's over 44,000 documented legal barriers to all of those things. The group works to give citizens a fresh start by providing education, job training, and a sense of belonging on the outside. A belonging Perez says he was missing, having his first run-in with the law at just eight years old, the first of many. I didn't have a plan, I didn't have my faith, um, and I didn't have support. So I uh, found myself six months later actually arrested again, um, this time as an adult. At 27 years old, he was released from prison and able to find housing through a local church, a gesture that he says led to employment and eventually college. That healing is important and it needs to take place in order for individuals to be able to flourish and, and reach their full potential. So, you know, the, the church and, and people within the church were instrumental in that for me. That belonging is important, especially in a journey that often requires leaving behind people from the past. One of the things that, that I really tell people is like we adults now, and a lot of us went in when we was kids. And so to come out and say, I'm going back around the neighborhood to see what's going on and hanging out, that's not grown, um, that's not adult behavior. Weaver and Perez are now advocates for their fellow citizens, working within local governments to change laws and working with returning citizens to change minds. Being able to offer that voice at the table, uh, I really count as a privilege. My ultimate goal is to get rid of re the word returning citizen and just be a citizen. Like we just want to be acclimated back into society and just be a normal citizen and get afforded all the opportunities that a normal citizen gets. Eric Weaver, the gentleman you met in the story, now advises the mayor's office here in DC, helping her come up with new initiatives for reentry. Amber Strong, Scripps News, Washington. Our series of Truth About Crime airs all week long on Scripps News. Tomorrow, we're going to focus on school security. Take a look. More than 24 years ago, Columbine was a shock to our nation. But in 2023, school shootings have become ingrained into our lives. What does it say kind of about the times that we're in that we have firms like yours? You know, my job is really to help districts understand their needs. It, it's sad that we've, that it's, turned the tide of school design that direction. Coming up, we show you how school buildings are being built differently in an effort to save lives from the dangers kids and teachers face. Scripps News correspondent Jesse Cohen's special report will air tomorrow at noon Eastern right here on Scripps News Live. In the meantime, here's what's straight ahead in this hour of Scripps News Live. Meet a pair of labor and delivery nurses who share a bond that goes beyond just bringing babies into the world. I mean, we've done many deliveries together, but there are some times that I just get that feeling in my heart. Like, I'm just like, wow, you're, you're amazing. No, the special way these two spent Mother's Day. That's next. Wouldn't it be great if every meal was perfect? Not just big family cookouts or cozy dinners for two, but even those crazy busy everyday meals... With Omaha Steaks, you'll love every meal because we only deliver the best. The possibilities are endless, and perfection is always guaranteed. Visit omahasteaks.com slash TV to order the perfect meal collection today for just $99.99 and get eight burgers free. Your paycheck. Your family depends on it. But if something happened to you... 
You need life insurance. And chances are SelectQuote can get it for you for under a dollar a day. SelectQuote found Michael 38, a $500,000 policy for under $23 a month. SelectQuote found Anna 37, a $750,000 policy for under $23 a month. Select Quote Secret? They comparison shop a select group of great companies like these for your best rate. Give your family the security they need at a price you can afford. Since 1985, Select Quote has saved over a million families millions of dollars on life insurance. Call now. 1-800-646-6345. That's 1-800-646-6345. Or go to selectquote.com. Discover what over a million families know. We shop, you save. We need a small business loan fast. I got this. Loan Falcon! There's a better way to get a fast small business loan. Go to ondeck.com, and if approved, get your funds as soon as the same day. Your loan is on deck. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe, with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. If you're living with diabetes, this sound may save your life. A continuous glucose monitor provides glucose readings and alerts you in real time to potential lows and harmful spikes without painful finger sticks. It's easy, convenient, and proven to lower your A1C. If you administer insulin, you may qualify for a continuous glucose monitor at no cost to you. Call now. It could save your life. Just call 800-233-6176. This new GCM technology immediately eliminates your pain and helps you make better diabetes treatment decisions. That means no more guessing. It's easy to see your glucose number any time of the day. Call now and get free shipping. Plus, we'll bill your insurance company for you. Satisfaction guaranteed. Don't wait until it's too late. Take control of your diabetes now. Just call 800-233-6176. That's 800-233-6176. Millions of Americans took time to honor mom yesterday, including one man who's made it a tradition to do something special for mothers on Mother's Day. Check this out. American Airlines pilot Captain Russ Wyatt headed, handed out roses to the mothers on his flight. Aww. Now, this flight was from Chicago to New York. Captain Wyatt had 400 blooms on hand, also gave them out to some colleagues, to flight attendants, and also to gate and ramp agents. And this is the 11th year in a row that he's been showering moms with flowers in what has become a beloved yearly tradition for him and his flight crew. Thank you so much. Hats off to you, Captain Wyatt. And then down in Nashville, this pair of labor and delivery nurses started their own Mother's Day tradition as well. They worked a 12 hour shift together. But what makes Lisa Harris and Chelsea Foster so unique is that their bond goes beyond their passion for bringing healthy babies into the world. They are mother and daughter themselves. Hannah McDonald with Scripps News Asheville has their story. Not only are babies born at Vanderbilt Hospital, so are moms. And one mother who is a nurse influenced another mother's career. There's so many factors that go into the situation. Labor and delivery nurses are just as passionate about the health of the mother as they are about the baby's health. Be there to hug them and um, hold their hand during the bad times. Um, and we just, we're a real family here. Lisa Harris and Chelsea Foster value family. They are mothers. Lisa is Chelsea's mother. I mean, we've done many deliveries together, but there are some times that I just get that feeling in my heart like I'm just like wow you're you're amazing <laughs> the mother and daughter started working the weekend shift together about one year ago they've been in the delivery room together more than 50 times doing all kinds of things vaginal delivery c-section everything and she's so on top of it doing good work means so much to both of them my mom is my mentor in a lot of ways there has been times when before she came here when I was on night shift I called her and I'm like mom what should I have done in this situation? And, you know, what could I have done better? What could I have done different? Both women have faced challenges. Lisa had Chelsea Young. Chelsea is hearing impaired. And I have watched her come out of her shell and just, just thrive 
and grow and it's it's beautiful to watch and it's and I get to see it all the time. This Mother's Day, these two in more ways than one are exactly where they want to be. I'm always saying I wouldn't be where I am without my mom. In Nashville, I'm Hannah McDonald reporting. Oh, I hope you all had a very happy Mother's Day. All right, I want to get you now to Florida where a 13 year old girl had quite the story to tell. She was attacked by a shark while swimming at a South Florida beach. Scripps News local correspondent Stephanie Suskin has her scary ordeal. Less than 24 hours after the unthinkable. It was like right there, right in the white water and the main part where it got stitches. Like if it bit down harder, that would have been like really, really bad. 13 year old Ella Reed returned to her favorite place. Kind of just feels the same every day, if not like every other day. Reflecting on the moment when what she believed to be at least a four foot bull shark came after her. We don't really like expect it, but we kind of thought eventually it was gonna happen. Ella and a friend were sitting in waist deep water at Fort Pierce Inlet State Park Thursday afternoon when a shark interrupted their beach day. It went under her and straight to me and got my stomach first and I tried blocking it with my arm and my hand and it kind of just slipped in and got my finger and my arm and it like swooped around and got my leg again. It, it didn't really hurt in the first part because like all the adrenaline was just like yeah, I don't know. We were so shocked. We didn't even know. This brave girl <laughs> really scary. ran out of the water and headed home. First, initially, I seriously thought it was a prank. Once Ella's parents realized this was no prank, they brought her here to the St. Lucie County Fire Station just down the road where she was rushed to the hospital. Just kind of went in automatic fix it what the heck mode. <laughs> Mom Devin says they've lived in this North Hutchinson Island community for more than 20 years and never worried about a shark bite. The whole thing's surreal really. It doesn't, it sounds like a movie. It doesn't feel real. She calls it a learning experience yeah. for their water loving family. Pretty scary stuff, but thankfully she's there and talking to you. And once you could see, okay, she's all right. Then you kind of come down a bit. Oh yeah, definitely. It's kind of hard in the sand. Yes, definitely. An experience that teaches respect for the ocean and all who call it home. Yeah, I'm just going to keep on coming back after the stitches come out. Stephanie Suskind, Scripps News. Wow, she is just lucky. A little girl is lucky. All right, can President Biden and Speaker McCarthy cut a deal on the debt ceiling before the country ends up in default? I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. We're going to take you inside the negotiations and your next era of Scripps News Live. That's next. We're Carvana. We've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Go to Carvana, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. We'll come to you, pay you on the spot, then pick up your car. That's it. At Carvana. This year, Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill, and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. That means you get protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years now. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's gonna cover the repair that they weren't expecting anyway. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. My mom told me to call CarShield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, CarShield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with CarShield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered, and I saved close to $9,000. I called car shield and saved over five thousand dollars yes car shield is a good value every plan through car shield comes with a price lock guarantee which means no matter how many repairs you need the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car call now and save money with your price lock guarantee it's not a matter of if your car will break down but when call car shield now before it's too late 
Call 800-287-5264. 800-287-5264. Attention all business owners. If you had W-2 employees during the COVID-19 pandemic, you may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee with the Employee Retention Tax Credit. The deadline to file your claims is approaching. Call now to see if your business qualifies. This approved payroll tax refund program from the U.S. Treasury Department is set up to reward business owners who kept employees on payroll during the pandemic. There is no upfront cost to see if your company is eligible. Plus, if you don't receive a refund, you pay nothing. You want a trusted partner who understands the IRS guidelines. ERC advisors are standing by to help your business claim your COVID refund. You may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee. This quick and easy call can get your business the money it deserves. Don't miss the deadline to file your claims. Just call 800-259-3916. That's 800-259-3916. Local, national, and worldwide headlines. Breaking down the day's biggest stories with live reporting from around the globe. I'm Del Walters, and this is your Evening Debrief. Live tonight, starting at 6, 5 Central, only on Scripps News. begin this hour in Washington, where a second meeting could happen as soon as tomorrow for top lawmakers trying to tackle the urgent debt crisis with that clock winding down right now. Thank you so much for staying with us on this Monday afternoon. It is now 1 p.m. in the East, 10 a.m. out West. I'm Veronica Del Cruz. Good to have you with us. Hope you had a great Mother's Day weekend. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. So President Biden is likely to meet again with congressional leaders to try and hammer out a new debt limit agreement sometime this week. But Time is running out. Secretary Yellen warning the U.S. could default for the first time ever as soon as June 1st, which is now a little more than two weeks away. I think he ran out to Scripps News Congressional Correspondent Nathaniel Reed, who's live for us on Capitol Hill right now. So, Nate, it is crunch time. Are congressional leaders any closer to a deal? Well, look, Veronica, it depends on who you talk to. If you talk to President Biden, he appeared to project some uh, optimism over the weekend. That congressional leadership, at least the staff that has been reportedly meeting for the last couple of days, especially given that President Biden uh, decided to postpone his own meeting with uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy, uh, that the, the staff has been meeting and that they've been making good progress. Take a listen. I remain optimistic because I'm a congenital optimist. But I really think there's a desire on their part as well as ours to reach agreement. I think we'll be able to do it. At the end of last week, when I asked uh, the Senate Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, if he felt that he was confident they would reach a deal sometime soon, he told me, we'll get there. But if you listen to House Speaker Kevin McCarthy this morning, he's not nearly projecting as much confidence that they'll actually be able to come up with some sort of agreement in a timely fashion. Take a listen. It doesn't seem to me yet that they want it. It just seems that they want to look like they're in a meeting, but they're not. They're not talking anything serious. And in the meantime, we just watched the CBO come out saying we're a hundred billion dollars further in debt. And so, uh, uh, do you? It seems more like they want a default than a deal. <laughs> And these negotiations, of course, remain ongoing. Both sides are talking. There's questions over what Democrats could potentially agree to. Republicans have been very insistent that they'd like to see cuts, uh, spending cuts, when it comes to the debt ceiling. Uh, Democrats have also maintained that they want to raise the debt limit with no preconditions, no cuts whatsoever. Remember, Veronica, the time on this is really running out. The U.S. is getting extremely close to that X state where the government would based on law, be unable to pay its bills because it wouldn't be able to borrow any more money to pay for the things it already agreed to pay for. And I know that the Treasury Secretary, Jenny Yellen, has said there is a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to this X date, and it might be dependent on the number of tax receipts that, that come in. How much time do they actually have to work out a deal here? This is the last week, Veronica, that Congress's, both houses of Congress are slated to be in session here in Washington. After that, uh, the House is in for a couple of days, the Senate's in for a couple of days, but largely there is not much time left. We're less than two, uh, week, two and a half weeks away from that potential X date of June 1st, which the U.S. could default on its obligations for the first time in American history. Also, President Biden later this week, after a likely meeting on Tuesday, headed to Japan on Wednesday for the G7.
It's a really packed schedule with holidays coming up. There's big questions of how much time leadership and actual members have, even if they were to reach an agreement, to vote on those agreements and send them to President Biden's desk. Yeah, I mean, with uh, Congress wrapping things up, like you said, clock is ticking for sure. Nathaniel Reed reporting live from Capitol Hill. Nate, thank you so much. So Republicans on Capitol Hill insist there will be no deal without first addressing the national deficit. Scripps News political correspondent Joe St. George continues our coverage now with a closer look at why these talks have been so difficult and what could actually get Republicans to the table. The week begins here at the Treasury Department with more questions about the debt limit. It's been a few weeks now since the Secretary of the Treasury wrote to Congress saying that a default in our country would be possible in early June, potentially June 1st, unless Congress acts a more definitive default deadline date is expected to be announced soon. Meanwhile, negotiations continue, and it can be a bit confusing. Democrats' position for months has been they want a clean debt ceiling now. Conservatives believe the debt limit should be raised in exchange for some spending cuts. So what cuts do conservatives want? To be clear, negotiations right now are happening behind closed doors. But the easiest way to figure out what conservatives want is to look at what already passed in the House of Representatives, the 320-page Limit Save Grow Act. Don't worry, you don't have to read it. We did it for you. If you flip to page 15, you start to understand. The rescission of unobligated coronavirus funds. That's a mouthful, but it means Republicans want cities and states who haven't used their previously allocated pandemic pandemic stimulus dollars to give it back. Estimates have savings at around 56 billion. On the same page, you see prohibit unfair student loan giveaways. That targets President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, as well as changes to income-driven repayment plans. The Supreme Court could issue a ruling in the coming weeks blocking it, but conservatives want it blocked now. Estimated savings, 425 billion. And while we can't read to you the entire bill in a two-minute report, you should read page 89. Conservatives are calling it taxpayer protection. In reality, it's about resetting sending the billions of dollars allocated to the Internal Revenue Service last year to increase the number of auditors. Estimated savings, $71 billion. However, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office says a defunded IRS would result in less tax revenue over time, wiping out any savings. And finally, on page 95, something known as a community engagement requirement. It would mean more able-bodied adults under 56 years of age would have to work or volunteer each month to stay on Medicaid. New restrictions would also be placed on how long someone could receive SNAP benefits. That's money for low-income people to buy food. Estimated savings, $120 billion. To be clear, these proposals from conservatives are being met with resistance inside the White House. Barack Roma Murdy is on President Biden's National Economic Council. We have two very different visions, uh, us and the Republicans, uh, on this point. But still, conservatives say the White House must be willing to cut something. Should people start panicking about a potential default? No. Iowa Republican Senator Chuck Grassley says it's only fair for them to try and use this moment to get something. It's all part of a big compromise to get this spending down. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Well, the Department of Homeland Security says there has not been a huge increase in the number of migrants looking to enter the U.S. when Title 42 came to an end. But there are still many thousands of people in difficult situations. The Biden administration is taking action right now to streamline the migration process. And it plans to ask an appeals court today to release migrants without them having to make a first court appearance because it takes up to two hours to process each person. National correspondent Axel Tercios has been monitoring the story for us and joins us now live. So Axel, uh, this is kind of eye-opening, eye, eye uh, not what the Biden administration was thinking here. What are they saying right now about what is behind the decrease in numbers? Well, Veronica, the U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is giving credit to the penalties faced now by migrants who try to enter the U.S. illegally, penalties that have resumed under an existing law after the expiration of Title 42. So they're saying, the Biden administration is saying that they have seen a 50% in decrease in decreased encounters compared to final days of Title 42. So the average, so the, in the last three days, the encounters have averaged below to 5,000 encounters. And before Title 42, they saw the number to reach over 10,000 encounters on a day. Just Friday, they saw 6,300 encounters. And on Saturday, they saw 4,200. And about 2,400 people were repatriated to Mexico in the last three days, Veronica. 
So, Axel, I want to take a closer look at this and talk more about how the Biden administration's sweeping new asylum regulations have been affecting attempts to cross the border here. Is it the new policy that's been put into effect, or is it the number of troops that are now at the border? So it's, it's so it's a mix of both. It's the new policy for asylum seekers and also, you know, the new implementation of this app where uh, migrants need to file appointments before they try to enter the U.S. So under the new plan, the migrants are required to schedule appointments using an application in their smartphones or they must seek protection from countries they pass through before and on their way to the U.S. So if they do not follow these steps then and are caught entering the U.S. illegally, then they won't be allowed to try again, even through legal means, for five years. And they could also face uh, prison terms for other violations and other criminal charges, Veronica. So it's become very hard for these migrants who before were entering the country. Now they have to wait. And that's the reason, uh, you know, why the Biden administration is saying the numbers may have decreased in the last, you know, three days after the expiration of Title 42. But they are saying and Republicans are saying that there could be a surge of migrants coming to the border anytime soon. Hmm. All right. Axel Tercios, live from New York City. Axel, thank you so much for tracking the story for us. So providing assistance for migrants goes beyond U.S. and state governments. There are other people trying to help those who are seeking asylum right now. Natalie Chuck from Scripps News San Diego takes a closer look at a grassroots effort helping immigrants in Hacumba, California. As the hot sun beats down in this East County desert, Colombia, Colombia. migrants from all over the world waiting on American soil, doing whatever they can to stay covered. She said that they're doing good, but if she would have known the situation, she would have risked her kids or herself. This mother of two traveling from Colombia to the United States alongside her husband. She says they paid $400 for guidance to the border after taking two flights to get to Tijuana. She was told that as soon as she crossed into America, things would be better. But she wasn't expecting to be here for five days with little food or water. Yo he llorado de saber que a mis hijas a estos. She has cried to know, uh, from sacrificing her kids to the situation. A few miles down the road, it's all hands on deck at this abandoned gas station. Donations pouring in for migrants. This entire process, all thanks to community members, not government aid. And all of those donations at that gas station in Hakumba packed up and brought here multiple times a day to the border where hundreds are lining up waiting to pick up those donations. Over here they've got water bottles, they're picking up blankets. And then over here we've got clothing donations, even more being spread out as we speak. All of these people, these volunteers just dug Dozens of them servicing hundreds of people. This is like nothing like we've ever seen. Jeffrey Osborne lives in the area and is spearheading this effort after initially seeing hundreds of migrants at the border on Thursday. People sprawled out through the desert with kind of makeshift shelters out of sticks and other things with no services whatsoever. When asked how helpful these resources have been. Oh, nos han salvado la vida. Ayer antes, antes de que llegaran no habíamos comido nada, ni una gota de agua. Yesterday when we got here and dropped off their food, they had had no meals at all. And with only a fraction of these migrants taken by Border Patrol each day, volunteers expect to be out here for a while. If people support us, we can keep doing what we're doing. And we are giving every single person there, especially the families with women and kids, everything they need every single day. Natalie Chuck for Scripps News. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, East Palestine homeowners want more from Norfolk Southern three months after a toxic train derailment. Why they say the money the company is offering is nowhere near enough. Also, a personal brush with death pushed one nurse to be a change maker. My physician, she started praying over me. I was very concerned when, I, when she started praying. Why she is now saying her story, along with a long list of family medical tragedies, birthed her passion for women's health care. Scripps News Live continues after this. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. 
Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. I will. Bless those who bless you. Here in Israel and across the former Soviet Union, there are thousands of destitute elderly Jews who are alone and in need of basic food. They desperately need your help. <laughs> Ramzia is a Holocaust survivor. <laughs> She keeps saying, my refrigerator is empty. Wow. She's embarrassed to ask for help. Their need, as you can see, is extremely urgent. Right now, you can give a gift of life of $25. The International Fellowship of Christians and Jews will bring comfort and food to Ramzia and thousands of others. Ramazia has had such a hard life, and to see the smile, you can save a life, just like Ramazia. I'm partnering with the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. This trusted ministry has given Christians like me a way to <laughs> tangibly bless Jewish people who are in need around the world. A life-saving $25 gift helps send a volunteer with one urgently needed survival food box. Without your response, their pain and suffering will continue. For less than $1 a day, you can say, I will bless and comfort the Jewish people. I will save a life today. Wherever in the world the Jewish people have the greatest need, our spiritual mandate is to feed the hungry and to care for the widows and orphans. Please call or go online now and say, I will bless his people, Israel. Sixteen minutes after the hour now, let's take a look at some health headlines for you. A new drug on the market could help women experiencing menopause. The FDA has approved a new type of drug to treat hot flashes, and it doesn't include hormones, making it a good alternative for women with underlying health conditions. The drug targets brain cells, which then regulate the body's temperature. Trial data shows it provided relief for symptoms like sweating, flushing, and chills. In Ohio, a hospital leader says she almost lost her life during pregnancy, which is why now she's pushing to give women a better health care experience. Courtney Guzman with Scripps News Cleveland shares her story of survival. On December 5th of last year, she became Metro Health's newest CEO. Hello, and thank you so much for attending. This. She's the first black woman and nurse to hold the position. Unfortunately, my passion was born of pain and born of tragedy. How the Chicago native ended up here has a lot to do with the series of losses in her life. I lost my mother. When I was 23 years old, she was 46. After being diagnosed and misdiagnosed first for a very rare form of cancer called acute myeloid leukemia. Dr. Steed tells me her mother, a critical care nurse, was misdiagnosed twice and breast cancer claimed the lives of both of her grandmothers. But a series of, of hiccups of delayed care, misdiagnoses, mistreatment, inappropriate treatment. But perhaps the most devastating loss came just a year and a half ago. Something that completely broke my heart uh, was when my younger sister, at age 39 years old, uh, lost her life to forced stage breast cancer. Despite their family history, Dr. C tells me her sister was denied a mammogram several years prior to her diagnosis. She was too young, is, is what she was told. 
Um, so she was in her early 30s. But Dr. Steed's story as a change maker may have started with her own brush with death. Metro Health's top boss tells me she's a two-time survivor of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is a serious condition that can affect pregnant women marked by high and sometimes deadly blood pressure levels. This mother of four tells me her final pregnancy is one that nearly took her life due to a sudden onset of preeclampsia. I woke up with the most excruciating headache. And I literally felt that I was having an aneurysm. As I pulled over the sheets, I looked down um, at my lower extremities, and I can, I, I can honestly tell you that my, my legs look like logs. Steed was near the beginning of her third trimester when she was rushed to the emergency room. A lot of people running, running ac across the room. What I recall is my physician, she started praying over me. I was very concerned when, I, when she started praying. She started tearing up, actually. Steed was rushed to a second hospital where doctors were preparing to perform a C-section. I don't think that I should be breathing right now. And uh, what my blood pressure readings were. It was stroke-like levels. Steve's liver and kidney functions were now compromised. And as Steve was fighting for her life, she ended up going into labor naturally, delivering her daughter Riley at just 29 weeks. Riley weighed just a pound and a half and would spend four months in the hospital. Seven years later, Dr. Steve tells me her youngest is now thriving while she herself still recovers both mentally and physically from that traumatic experience. And I was certainly aware that I was becoming a statistic in that moment. If you're a black woman, and I, I certainly am, you're three times as likely to die from pregnancy-related causes. You think you were on the verge of death? I felt it. I felt it. And that was Courtney Guzman reporting for us from Cleveland, Ohio. So to come on Scripps News Live, three months after a toxic train derailment in Ohio, Norfolk Southern is vowing to compensate people for their depreciating home values. But homeowners are saying it's still not enough. Even if they came and offered me what my house was valued at before, that's not even a down payment nowadays. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, hear why homeowners are skeptical as their patients with the real giant wears thin. And don't forget right here, you can always count on Scripps News for all of your headlines throughout the primetime hours beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kirk Kaiser. And did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-379-8435. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week, and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. 800-379-8435. 
800-379-8435. That's 800-379-8435. Wouldn't it be great if every meal was perfect? Not just big family cookouts or cozy dinners for two, but even those crazy busy everyday meals? With Omaha Steaks, you'll love every meal because we only deliver the best. The possibilities are endless, and perfection is always guaranteed. Visit omahasteaks.com slash TV to order the perfect meal collection today for just $99.99 and get eight burgers free. On a special one hour in real life. Create something like a Google Translate for non-human languages. Yes, Voices of Nature on In Real Life. New episode Sunday night at 8, 7 central. Only on Scripps News. All this week, go behind the myths of criminality in America. If people feel unsafe, then that's a problem. The truth about crime. Tomorrow morning at 7, 6 central on Morning Rush. Right here, we'd like to hear from you. You can always give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline, toll free. That number right there on your screen, one eight three three four Scripps. Share your comments, your story ideas with us at any time. Three months after the fiery train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, Norfolk Southern has announced plans to compensate homeowners for depreciated properties. Bryn Caswell from Scripps News Cleveland spoke with homeowners who told her that the railroad can do better. Shelby Walker bought her home on East Haggard Street 19 years ago. We come from a small town in East Palestine where our homes aren't worth a, a whole lot to people. They are to us because we've worked so hard for them. For almost two decades, her home served as the heart of the family. But all that changed February 3rd. Walker lives 900 feet from the train derailment. It's not just did they disrupt me, but my three girls lived with me with their families. So it's like they disrupted multiple families in just one home. This week, in this letter sent to the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation, Norfolk Southern has accrued nearly $400 million in charges for the derailment. The company now plans to compensate homeowners whose properties have depreciated after the February 3rd derailment. Norfolk Southern tells me, while it's developing full details of the real property fund, to be eligible, homeowners must live within a five-mile radius of the derailment and sell their homes for less than their property's pre-February 3rd appraised value. Any homeowners who have such claims for property value diminution must submit claims through the Family Assistance Center. Norfolk Southern expects to begin making payments to homeowners within one year. My home was only worth 60-some thousand before all this. Now it's down to 40-some thousand, but... Even if they came and offered me what my house was valued at before, that's not even a down payment nowadays. To me, I'm still going to be stuck here. Landlord William Foster, who owns a duplex also on East Haggard Street, says he feels he's at a standstill. I mean, I believe they owe people something because, like I said, you know, what's that house worth now? All his tenants have moved out due to health concerns. Well, it's kind of a mess. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm paying the utilities on the building and everything, and I'm just deciding what I'm going to do with them. I can't charge them rent if they're not living there, you know. Cleanup by the EPA in Norfolk Southern remains underway. 16.6 million gallons of liquid wastewater has been removed, and over 25,000 tons of soil is still waiting removal. Walker says some of that soil continues to grow by the pile in her backyard. I walked out this morning to go to work and it smelled so bad. And in the meantime, her patience is growing thin. I'm not asking to become a millionaire. I'm not asking that at all. All I want is safe homes that we can get back to some kind of normalcy. In East Palestine, Bryn Caswell, Scripps News. All right, 28 minutes after the hour right here. I'm Veronica Del Cruz. Great to see you today. I want to get you caught up on the day's top stories right here. And you're listening in on the 13 bells that were chiming in Buffalo, New York this weekend. Remembering the 10 people killed, three others injured in a grocery store shooting that happened one year ago. The gunman later admitted that he shot the victims because they were black. 
Well, the U.S. Postal Service now cracking down on crime after it says that 300 mail carriers were robbed this year. That's in addition to the 25,000 break-ins at collection boxes. The Postal Service plans to install 12,000 high-security collection boxes in the United States. It's also going to be replacing 49,000 old-fashioned locks with electronic ones. And in other news, Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley has refused to support a federal abortion ban. The former South Carolina governor said on CBS News' Face the Nation that it's just not realistic on the federal level. Haley signed a 20-week abortion ban when she was South Carolina's governor. Republican presidential candidate Tim Scott of South Carolina has called for a 20-week federal abortion ban. So this weekend, all eyes were on the man widely expected to challenge Haley and others for the Republican presidential nomination. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis rallied voters at the Feenstra family picnic in Sioux Center on Saturday before making a surprise stop in Des Moines, Iowa. DeSantis' unannounced appearance in the state capitol sparking conversation because it came just hours after former President Trump canceled an event there, citing concerns about dangerous weather. Florida State Capitol reporter Forrest Saunders attended the event and has more now on what appears to be the buildup to the official unveiling of DeSantis 2024. From Sioux Center. Thank you. To Cedar Rapids. Ron DeSantis. Florida's governor barnstormed Iowa on Saturday, delivering stump speeches and not very subtle swings at former President Donald Trump, urging Iowans to pick a winner in 2024. There's no substitute for victory. We must reject the culture of losing that has infected our party in recent years. The time for excuses is over. The governor even capitalized on severe weather canceled Trump's Des Moines rally. So DeSantis made a surprise stop near the venue, only further raising suspicion that a big announcement is imminent. What do you want to hear from him today? Um, that he's going to run. I would love to hear that. Plenty we spoke with were ready for something new, as some Iowans have soured on Trump's divisive rhetoric. And I think DeSantis has got the ability to kind of really bring our country together a little bit. And Trump's defeats. Well... He, he couldn't handle losing my January 6th deal. That's the biggest thing. DeSantis also has a growing number of Iowa officials behind him, at least 37 state GOP lawmakers giving endorsements this weekend, like the Senate president and House majority leader. Look at what he's done in Florida. Look at what he's done to help bolster other states and lead by example. That's the kind of leader that we need. It's a tough call for others. I know some people are... Trumpers, you know, they're not going to vote for anybody but Trump, you know. I don't know. I'm going to have to wait and see. Meanwhile, Iowa's politicians elected statewide say they're not taking sides. Any thoughts about 24 with regards to Governor DeSantis? Well, we're going to continue to welcome him. Of course, uh, Governor Kim Reynolds and Chuck Grassley and I will remain neutral through the caucuses. America's comeback starts right yes! now. Trump definitely has his supporters, too. You know, Trump just has something about him that he draws people. And even with that scrubbed rally, the former president still sought to plant the flag. Trump fired off a press release showing support of more than 150 Iowa elected and grassroots leaders Saturday night. Then Sunday took to Truth Social to tout his lead in early polling. He dubbed the governor Rob and questioned if he's, quote, just young, inexperienced, and naive, or more troubling, is he a fool who has no idea what he's doing? All right. That jab aside, exactly what DeSantis is doing sure looks like running for president and making a bid for Iowa ahead of the vital caucuses. For Saunders, Scripps News, Tallahassee. Want to get you overseas now, where Turkey's closely watched presidential election is headed to a runoff. None of the four candidates on the ballot received enough votes to lead Turkey for the next five years. Now, conservative incumbent president Recep Tayyip Erdogan will go head to head with his main rival on a May 28th runoff election. Now, the U.S. has been keeping a close eye on this election, the Biden administration becoming increasingly frustrated with Erdogan after he blocked Sweden's bid to join NATO and didn't join in the economic embargo against Russia. Let's get you right now to Scripps News correspondent Trent Murray, who's been tracking this story for us closely. He joins us now live from Istanbul, Turkey. So, Trent, President Erdogan has led the nation now for, what, some 20 years, two decades? Is he in jeopardy of losing his presidency? 
Uh, well, Veronica, I think certainly uh, for the first time in a long time, the people of this country are staring down the barrel of a possible change in the presidential palace. President Erdogan was hoping to take this thing out in the first round, but as that vote came in, his vote share did shrink throughout the night, particularly as those big cities came in, like here in Istanbul and also the capital, Ankara. So what we do know now is that he will go into a second round against his 74-year-old opponent, Kamal Kalistorolu. He is a seasoned politician in this country, long been a thorn in the side of Erdogan. But I would have to say that going into that second round, you would probably prefer to be in the Erdogan camp. They are about two million votes ahead. They are feeling confident that they should be able to finish the job in the second round. But nevertheless, the opposition has come out swinging today, ready to gear up for one very combative and I would suggest emotionally charged campaign leading up to the second round vote on May 28th. It's worth noting, of course, as you say, many international countries watching this election, both here in Europe, but also stateside. Turkey is a NATO member. It's got the second largest army in NATO after the US. It's also home to the Injilik Air Base for the US Air Force, a major base that the Americans carry out operations in the Middle East from. Uh, Trent, what has voter turnout been like? Uh, none of these candidates were able to reach that 50% threshold. What can you tell us about voter turnout and the remaining candidates? Yeah, look, voter turnout really high. It always is in a Turkish election. It was about 85% last time around. Last night we saw it much closer to 90%. Two big factors we understand in all of that. The first is overseas voters. A large Turkish diaspora across Europe came out to vote. But also Gen Z voters, first time 18, 19, 20-year-olds. They have known no other president other than Erdogan. They voted very much for the opposition largely. Uh, but it it wasn't enough to get Kalistarolu up close to Erdogan's vote. And, and so we know that going into that next round, both sides working incredibly hard to try and push turnout. I should mention a third party candidate that had to drop out of the race overnight. He achieved about 5% of the vote. Many analysts say that given he is a Turkish nationalist, it's very likely his votes will head towards Erdogan. But nevertheless, we understand he's been on plenty of telephone calls today, lots of horse trading and negotiations negotiation to try and decide which way he will swing his voters towards in that second round. May 28th is the date we're tracking. All right, we're keeping a close eye on that. Trent Murray reporting live for us from Istanbul, Turkey. Trent, thank you. Now the UK, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak agreeing to send long-range attack drones to Ukraine. It's all in addition to cruise missiles announced last week. Sunak meeting with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in London today. Sunak said the UK will train Ukrainian fighter pilots to use Western jets relatively soon. And in the meantime, President Zelensky said that a delayed Ukrainian counteroffensive against Russian troops will also begin soon. We really need some, some more time. Not too much. We'll be ready, you know, in some time. I, I, I want to be very honest with you. I, I can't share with you some days. I, I just don't want to prepare. Not, not for our friends. There are no secrets from our friends, but there are some secrets from, from our neighbors. President Zelensky has visited several European countries shoring up support for the fight against Russia. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, sports gambling might be legal, but the big money is leading to some big trouble for some major sports. Coming up after a quick break, we're going to take a closer look at the dark side of sports gambling. That's next. We need a small business loan fast. I got this. Loan cannon! There's a better way to get a fast small business loan. Go to ondeck.com and if approved, get your funds as soon as the same day. Your loan is on deck. This year, Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? Because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill, and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. 
That means you get protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years now. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's gonna cover the repair that they wasn't expecting anyway. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. My mom told me to call CarShield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, CarShield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with CarShield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered, and I saved close to $9,000. I called CarShield and saved over $5,000. Yes, CarShield is a good value. Every plan through CarShield comes with a price lock guarantee, which means no matter how many repairs you need, the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car. Call now and save money with your price lock guarantee. It's not a matter of if your car will break down, but when. Call CarShield now before it's too late. Call 800-287-5264. 800-287-5264. 800-287-5264. If you're living with diabetes... This sound may save your life. A continuous glucose monitor provides glucose readings and alerts you in real time to potential lows and harmful spikes without painful finger sticks. It's easy, convenient, and proven to lower your A1C. If you administer insulin, you may qualify for a continuous glucose monitor at no cost to you. Call now. It could save your life. Just call 800-233-6176. This new GCM technology immediately eliminates your pain and helps you make better diabetes treatment decisions. That means no more guessing. It's easy to see your glucose number any time of the day. Call now and get free shipping. Plus, we'll bill your insurance company for you. Satisfaction guaranteed. Don't wait until it's too late. Take control of your diabetes now. Just call 800-233-6176. That's 800-233-6176. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe, with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. 41 minutes after the hour now, I'm Veronica Della Cruz, and welcome back to Scripps News Live. Some startling news to report right now. New research suggests a possible connection between early cell phone exposure and the mental health of young people. Science and health correspondent Lindsay Thies takes a closer look. A new report from Sapien Labs, a neuroscience research nonprofit, looked at roughly 28,000 responses to their online mental health survey, and they looked from January to April of this year. Researchers looked at answers from 18 to 24 year olds specifically. These are Gen Zers, the first generation to grow up with a smartphone, and we are talking about a cell phone with an internet connection. Researchers looked at someone's age when they got their first smartphone to see if it impacted parts of mental well-being, things like social engagement, self-esteem, and suicidal thoughts. The major takeaway, overall mental well-being scores were consistently higher when smartphone ownership began at an older age, both for females and for males. Now, one key finding, 46% of females experiencing mental health challenges received their first smartphone at the age of 18. 74% of females experiencing mental health challenges got their first smartphone at the age of six. 36% of males reported experiencing mental health challenges got their first smartphone at the age of 18, compared to 42% who got their first smartphone at the age of 6. Suicidal thoughts, feelings of aggression towards others, a sense of being detached from reality, or even hallucinations were some of the most dramatic in females who got their phones at a younger age. 
Researcher Tara Theogrogen says that this relates to the greatest impact they saw, something she calls a person's social self. This is, you know, encompasses all of the factors that, you know, uh, determine your how you see yourself and your ability to um, interact positively and, you know, with other people, form form relationships, maintain relationships, and so on. Now, this may sound very alarming for people watching who maybe you have a young child you've already given a smartphone to, or maybe you yourselves are someone who is a Gen Zer and has grown up with a smartphone from a very young age. Now, some important context when we are talking about this research. It has not been reviewed by scientific peers, like a big study you might see published in one of the major medical journals. That's because Sapien Labs has instead wanted to release this data on their own as quick as possible to give a current snapshot of what things are like right now. There are additional studies on cell phone age and mental health and at this point, we don't have a really clear-cut answer to what age is too young or just right to start using a smartphone. So right now, the way that the data is collected in these different research studies, it's often an apples to oranges situation. For example, you have this study we are talking about that's just coming out today. It had young adults self-reporting. It was a large group of people from dozens of different countries. We're talking thousands of responses. Now, that research, compare that to something that came out this past November from Stanford Medicine. That followed a small group of 250 students for five years and did not find a connection between the age a kid got their first cell phone and their sleep patterns or depression symptoms or grades. So what this all means is that more research is needed. So if you are watching this and you still want to help yourself, want to help a friend or family member, psychology experts say regardless of age, it is not just about limiting the time you are on one of these, but what someone is doing during that phone-free time. And they really suggest engaging, conversing, interacting, something face-to-face -face in real life with other people. Lindsay Thies, Scripps News, San Francisco. A former employee claims China's Communist Party could access TikTok data through the app's parent company ByteDance. ByteDance insists the claim isn't true. The employee made the accusation in a lawsuit, saying he was wrongfully terminated after exposing the practice. He says the Communist Party would use a backdoor channel to access information. In 2018, the Supreme Court ruled that sports gambling could be legal. It opened the door for individual states to create a new source of significant revenue. And as sports contributor Paul Crane explains, it also opened the door for potential issues with major sports. Last year, Americans wagered a staggering $93 billion on sports. The sports betting industry also hit a record with revenue totaling $7.5 billion, according to the American Gaming Association. But big money is starting to bring big problems. At least three major colleges have found themselves in the midst of gambling investigations. In the first week of May, Alabama baseball coach Brad Bohannon was abruptly fired after two suspicious bets were placed in the state of Ohio before Alabama's game at LSU in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Both were placed on LSU to win. The bets came as Alabama made an unexpected late change with its starting pitcher. ESPN has reported the person placing those bets was communicating with Bohannon at the time. No players have been implicated with Alabama, but that is not the case with two investigations currently underway in Iowa. Both Iowa and Iowa State are looking into allegations of online sports gambling by athletes in several sports at both schools, a violation of NCAA rules. At the University of Iowa, 111 people, including 26 student-athletes in football, baseball, men's basketball, men's track and field, and wrestling, have been flagged in the investigation. The Iowa Racing and Gaming Commission said there has been no evidence that would call into question the integrity of any sporting events at either school. The commission also said there has been no evidence to indicate any athletes bet on Iowa or Iowa State contests.
Last month, five NFL players, including Lions wide receiver Jamison Williams, were caught violating the league's gambling policy. Three were suspended indefinitely. Two others, including Williams, were suspended for six games. Former Falcons wide receiver Calvin Ridley was suspended all of last season for gambling on sports. He has since been reinstated after having been traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The NFL had treated sports gambling like it was radioactive for decades, but not anymore. This past season alone, the league and its 32 teams made more than $2 billion from sports gambling sponsorship deals. The revenue may be better than ever, but so are the risks it had feared for so long. Paul Crane, Scripps News. Coming up next, a new nationwide project is aiming to give those with autism a chance to be heard loud and clear. Straight ahead with Scripps News Live, meet the man behind the project and a few of the people whose voices have now been amplified. We'll be right back. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. This bakery needs new equipment fast to keep up with demand, so they're going to On Deck, the online lender that makes it easy to choose your loan and if approved, get funds as soon as the same day. Your loan is On Deck. Every detail counts. That's why I live my life with Lexi B2 hearing aids powered by Bose. I value quality, cutting edge tech, and performance. When I began experiencing hearing loss, I knew I needed the best of the best. Lexi B2 hearing aids powered by Bose are app controlled and self-fitting, which means I can tune and customize them to my needs and preferences on the Lexi app and enjoy high quality hearing. No appointment necessary from ordering my first pair online to front door delivery and the secure discreet fit. Lexi B2 hearing aids powered by Bose offer quality, convenience, and exceptional customer support at every step in my journey. If you're ready to elevate to the next level with world-class hearing, take the lead and call or order online at LexiHearing.com to receive your Lexi B2 hearing aids powered by Bose today. Call 800-461-0637 today to find out how you can get your Lexis at 80% less than prescription hearing aid prices. There's a lot to watch on TV these days. Problem is most streaming options are incredibly pricey and you'll end up paying for the local Local channels you can get for free. Luckily, there's a solution. Sling is only 40 bucks a month. And you get awesome stuff like sports, news, and today's hottest TV for half of what the other guys cost. If you already get free locals with an antenna, now you can easily add the channels you're missing with Sling. It's the TV you love for a price you'll love. Visit sling.com slash antenna to learn more. For over 100 years, this light has shined. A beacon of the free American press. Reporting from Ukraine, Scripps News. And now, this light shines even brighter. Scripps News. Welcome back. Autism diagnoses in the United States are on the rise among both children and young adults, but often those with developmental challenges are sidelined in society, and that isolation can be difficult to overcome. Scripps News' Alexa Liaco found one dad who started a project to bring the voices of, the, of those with autism into our everyday conversations. In the hustle and bustle of taking the train, you just might miss it. But listen carefully, and it's hard not to smile. Hi, my name is Emmanuel. Please help us repeat more to please. Please don't let her. Hope you enjoy your ride. If you know one thing about seven-year-old Emmanuel Stevens, it's that he loves trains. What I like about trains is that it goes fast, it 
it goes under the tunnels, it goes through the city, we get to see the city, the conductor drives the train, and Emmanuel has autism, and for many kids like him, trains and other very complex engineering systems are much more than mundane. Welcome to Morden. Enjoy your trip. They're a playground for learning and interacting. And now, Emmanuel is even more excited about his favorite spot because he and other kids and young adults with autism recorded announcements for the passengers. Hey, my name's Devin, and I love trains. Help us Key. These announcements are part of a nationwide effort called the Autism Transit Project. They're playing on MARTA here in Atlanta, in the subways of New York, and in trains in San Francisco, New Jersey, and Washington, D.C. For your safety, when traveling with a bicycle, scooter, stroller, or heavy luggage, avoid using the escalators. Every announcement is to make sure the voices of those with autism are heard and included. Oftentimes, kids with autism, no matter what level on the spectrum they're on, are excluded and misunderstood, um, including Emmanuel. But this project has afforded a number of individuals throughout the country an opportunity to show, I am unique, I'm special, I'm versatile, I'm capable. The project was started by Jonathan Trichter, who says it's just one step toward the larger goal. It's to incorporate neurodiverse individuals into civic society and allow them to experience and participate in the human experience at a fuller level. And it's important because just 10 or 15 years ago, we were warehousing a lot of these children as opposed to educating them. Trichter hopes more awareness will create more opportunities and jobs for those with autism, and it already has for Travail Sinclair, who is now interning with MARTA. You know, you could work here too. I am. Travail had his own announcement in the project too. I love it. The people here are absolutely wonderful. They have supported me very well in teaching me how the system works. And above all, it's just really good for someone like me with autism that needs a lot more of that guidance. Guidance that isn't always given from society, but to those living with autism, it's what makes both families and kids know they're part of the community. And to have my son do announcements here is just, and the wonderful other children and young adults that are on the announcement, it just, it warms my heart. Yes. I bet it yes, does. Yes, it does. <laughs> and if you hadn't noticed already, Emmanuel is proving the project works. He's feeling and seeing acceptance all around him. Oh, you got some applause? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It feels like, it just feels like it's a party. And we all can join in on Emmanuel's party by making time to notice the little things. Hope you enjoy your ride. That aren't so little at all. See you guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Oh, he's just so cute. That was Alexa Liaka reporting there for us. Coming up next, debt ceiling negotiations continue and another meeting between President Biden and congressional leaders could come as soon as tomorrow. Straight ahead in your next hour of Scripps News Live, where negotiations stand right now and what it would take to get a deal done. I'm Veronica Del Cruz. Questions, comments, you can always tweet me at Veronica D.L. Cruz. You can follow Scripps News online at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and on TikTok. I'll be back here at 3 p.m. Eastern with more Scripps News Live. In the meantime, Lauren Macarino is up next with more of the day's top stories.